Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you are new here, hi! My name is Natasha and it's fantastic to have you here. For today's video, I am so excited because we are unboxing and taking a look at the Fyodor Pavlov Tarot. This is a brand new release as of filming this video. It is published by US Game Systems, retailing for $46.95. And as always, in the description box below, I will link where you can legitimately purchase this deck should you want to. And thank you so much to US Game Systems for sending this deck our way to check out. So I'm excited for a few reasons. Look at this art, and then when you um, when we're done reading the back here, you'll see the other reason why I'm excited. So it says, Captivating artist Fyodor Pavlov pays tribute to the seminal Smith Weight tarot deck imagery by creating a hand painted tarot deck in watercolor and ink that is informed by his personal queer and trans experiences. The results is a tarot deck that is familiar and timeless while exploring new and diverse representations of gender, sexuality, and culture. Pavlov artfully introduces queer and non-binary identities while staying true to the canonical tarot meanings. This includes 78 gilded edge cards with color themed suits and a 176 page illustrated hardcover book. So first off, wonderful. I am excited for the representation. I'm excited for how beautiful the artwork is looking and the packaging alone. So let's take a look here. I love this indentation so you can grab on and open it up. Oh, okay. So we have a ribbon. Here's this nice book. Love it so far. Okay. We're going to take a look at that, but also here is, oh, the cards and there's the inlay there inset. Oh, and look at the back. Okay, before we get into the cards, let's just take a peek at the guidebook to see if there's anything important we need to know. Right, we have an introduction, major and minor, then it goes into the suits, and then we have spreads in the back. So, oh, spent five years working on this deck. Wow, this is awesome. So gender, let's just take a look here. There is pervasive reliance on a narrow cis and hetero heteronormative binary gender representations and roles in many tarot decks and interpretation texts. Though most people agree that archetypically masculine and feminine aspects of the card's meanings can apply to people of any gender and of any sexuality, there is still a dichotomy at work that feels untrue and incomplete to me. This model is something I tried to address in my own deck by switching the genders of certain cards, introducing non-binary identities, and including as many queer elements as I could could into my imagery while staying true overall to the canonical tarot meanings. I actually really appreciate this. I know that there are a lot of tarot um, readers, tarot enthusiasts that really like to be very strict with their cards and how they like their things. That's perfectly fine. But as we are opening up the uh, world of tarot to people that are new to it, who don't really have any um, uh, thing to go off of that they don't know the backgrounds. This is great to see that they're being more inclusive. There are so many different people in the world. It's nice to see that there are more decks aligning with those as well. So let's see what else we have. Let's see. Gratitude. All right. And then it just goes into the meanings of the cards, which we will go through once we are done with the flip through. I do want to see the spreads here. Look at this. It is just beautifully done. Okay. So we have the classic Celtic cross, a relationship spread, and the identity spread. Interesting. Sun, moon, and stars, love that, and the possibilities spread. And then we have about the artist. Oh, I love that. All right, so I'm gonna unwrap this and we'll get right into the flip through. All right, so here's the back. Look at how pretty that is. It's very simple, but effective. You can still see the texture there. I love it. And then we, of course, have the gold foiling or gilding on the sides. 
Love that. And I just want to mention, it seems like it's fine with this deck, but with all card stocks or card decks that come with the gilding, just be careful when you separate them because the gilding likes to stick to each other. And also over time, the gold will flake off. It's just normal wear and tear. So let's go ahead and get into it. First, checking the cardstock. It's a little bit on the thinner side, still flexible, still snaps back. I'm not mad at it yet. <laughs> we'll see how it shuffles. All right, here we go. I like the size of it too. I like this Art Nouveau style that is taking place. And it's interesting, it's a black cat instead of a dog there. That's cool. And just like with all the other decks, if this isn't speaking to you, then it's probably not the deck for you. But for those looking for representation, this might be the deck for you. It's so neat to see that we are becoming more inclusive. We are becoming more um, in tune to the needs of all tarot readers. Because again, tarot is for everyone. I love this one so much. It's the cover. It's just so gorgeously rendered. And I do like the little touches of color that we're seeing. That's really cool. The detail is so neat. So we have the Roman numeral up top, we have the title on the bottom, and we do have a little border. That is really cool to see. I'm just really impressed that this isn't just strictly an independent deck, that this is something that is published by a very prominent pub publisher. Oh, I like that. Oh, interesting. I love the addition of the waves crashing on this tower. Oh, and it's an angel falling. Interesting. This really does feel like a passion project. Oh, I love this rendition. This is giving me nostalgic vibes. Oh. Whoa, I like this one. Okay, so I'm getting um, the flash to, uh, you know, the, in the Christmas Carol, 
and the famous ghosts. I get uh, the, what is it, the future? Is that the one that's all dark? Only the reverse <laughs> with the judgment card. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, so that was the major. Now we're going to get into the minor here. Got wands. Ooh. Like that. All the papers. interesting I like the addition of the different genders in there for the five of wands So it looks like it for the wands we have this almost all I want to say pea green almost sagey color as the accent color oh wow The detail is just beautiful. Look at all of that. Oh. And then we have the sun and the moon. How cool. I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm enjoying this a lot. Gorgeous. They're all just living their best life, and I love this. I need to get me some of those boots. I say that every time there's like a really cool looking boot, but I swear I just love boots. Now we got some red for the swords. Ooh, gruesome, but a good way. Oh.
This definitely feels like you have a fine art museum in your hands. Just so well done. Oh, there's bats and owls. Love that. I'm excited to get into the guidebook. I'm always excited to get into the guidebook, but I definitely feel like this was such a passion project. Heart and soul into this. All right, now we have the coins. <laughs> That's a new version. Ah, oh, the outfits, just love them. All right, well, uh, I am blown away. Let's see how it shuffles. Yeah, it snapped back really nice, flexible. So you can even shuffle it without bracing it. Nice. Okay, so let's shuffle it this way. Yeah, I do not have an issue with it at all. Okay, let's get a card to read, please. All right. I'm going to read for the Empress. Here is a reminder. Is that a heart or a pomegranate? It looks like a heart. Okay. Let's go to the handy dandy guidebook here. Alrighty. It says the image for this card came to be very naturally and my interpretation is quite straightforward and in tune with the traditional Smith weight portrayal, motherhood, love, gentleness, sexuality, emotion, and the female as mistress. 78 Degrees of Wisdom by Rachel Pollock. Again, I am not exactly gunning for the gender binary with my deck, but the importance of this archetype spoke to me. I thought of all the women in my life who at one point or another embodied the empress and the sensual pleasure she takes in life, the love she shares with others, and the pursuit of pleasure she encourages and took inspiration from when drawing my card. Flowing water for the glory and creative force of nature, the star crown for wisdom and the universe, all the Empress's traditional attributes are present. One significant departure is the heart. Instead of a shield with a heart and Venus emblem, I wanted to display the more passionate and dangerous side of the Empress. Like a gentle spring day, she can be nurturing and mild, but she is also a mistress of passionate sexuality and decadent excess. To quote Pollock again, the Empress, along with such mythological counterparts as Aphrodite or Ishtar or Erzuli, hopefully that's the correct way to pronounce it, represents something very grand. They signify the passionate approach to life. They give and take experience with uncontrolled feeling. And so she clutches and upholds the heart, that innermost symbol of our emotions. 
a news clipping of an opera singer playing the role of Aphrodite in a Baroque opera used to hang in our house. The Empress's costume was inspired by the costume the actress wears in that picture. I quibbled over whether the Empress should be nude, clothed, or clothed but bare-breasted, and the latter felt like the most powerful choice. Her chest is bare, but her dress and jewelry indicate the status and power she wields. Uh, I am thoroughly impressed. I just want to check the uh, minor. Yeah, it's about the same thing. So there aren't really like any kind of keywords or anything like that. But I feel like what we get instead is a story of how it was created. Editing Natasha in here to do a voiceover because the sound of the mic was just awful. So um, I am thoroughly surprised with this deck. I think the guidebook is very passionate. I feel like the art style is beautifully done. The way that gender is expressed in this deck is fabulous. It's something that we haven't seen in this type of a setting per se with this Art Nouveau style. So it's really refreshing. It's very delicate, but it's very passionate at the same time. The guidebook is great too. I feel like there's quality in there, even though there's not just like keywords or a direct definition. I feel like you get to know the author slash artist a lot better. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over to you guys. What do you think about this deck? Is this something that you are excited about? I know a lot of you have been impatiently waiting for this deck to come out. I am very excited to know uh, what your thoughts are. I really don't have anything negative to say about this deck. I think it's stunning. And with that being said, it's not going to be for everyone, and I will not be tolerating any hate speech of any kind in the comment section. Just so we are well aware, this is a safe space. It has always been a safe space. My subscriber base is very diverse, so I would really appreciate it if you have nothing nice to say than to not say anything at all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I love you. And I like you. I appreciate you so much. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell on your way out of this video. That way you will never miss an upload from me. Thank you so much to US Game Systems for sending this deck our way. I appreciate it so much. Don't forget to check out all the links in my description box as well as the link tree that will provide you all of my social media links as well as my Etsy shop where I do private readings. Check out the channel memberships as well as the Patreons for per and to get your deck right to the top of my to-do list. So thank you so much again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.